For many years, Graphical and GraphQL Playground have been somewhat stale. It's also been very confusing for those adopting GraphQL for the first time. A lot of developers have seen great developer experience using the GraphQL Playground. However, it was announced the project will be merged into Graphical. And since then, there hasn't been too much change to the tools that we use today. That's now all changed with the release of Graphical 2. There's now a new, nicer looking graphical packed with features and modularity that will enable users of GraphQL and developers of platforms using GraphQL to easily implement into their existing platforms. It's worth noting that Graphical 2 isn't done just yet. The roadmap's quite clear and should give you an idea of where things are going and what will be added. You can continue to use Graphical in the same way you were before with something like a CDN. Or if you're using something like React, there are a few changes that you should be aware of. But in this video, let's just take a quick deep dive into how we can use Graphical 2. This is Graphical 2. This is a playground where you can run all of your GraphQL operations as well as inspect your GraphQL schema. We can browse the documentation to see all of the available queries, mutations, and any applicable subscriptions. In this example, I've connected my own API with Graphical and running this locally. Here we can see we have a cart query. We also have a root node query. We can see here that we have a description for this cart query. We can see here that the cart type has a description and it also implements the node type. We can see all of the null and non-nullable fields that belong to this cart type. Just like we could with the previous graphical, we can click through to any one of these types. Here we can see we have a unit total and we have the money type. And as we go through, we can click through and we can see here that we have a description for this scalar string. We can also use a search to query for any of our queries or mutations. So let's search for add item. And we can see here that we get the mutation add item. We can then see that this returns a non-nullable cart and it accepts the input argument add to cart input. We can also inspect the history. And if we click on a previous history item and go back, we can see here that the query has now been populated. We can see here that we're passing the ID directly inside of the GraphQL operation. Then we are spreading the fragment cart with items. This also uses fragments inside of that. Just like you could with the previous graphical, we can use some options here. One, we can make this look pretty. So if we make some mistakes or we make some formatting errors, we can click this button to make this look good. We can now see that this has been formatted correctly. Just like the previous graphical, we can also merge fragments into the query. If we click this, you'll notice that all of the fragments have now been merged into the query cart. We can also copy this query if we wanted to insert it into our code. Let's now take this ID and transform this into a variable. We'll give our query a name, get cart by ID, and we'll pass it the ID variable, and we'll assign it that non-nullable ID type. We can also see if we hover ID that we get a description for that scalar. And if we hover on any other of the fields in our query, we can also get a description about that and what that returns. If this has a description, this will also be returned. Now that we've updated the query to include a variable, let's open the panel for variables. Here, if I begin to type, we can see the available variables. I'm going to paste in the ID from before, and now I'll execute that query. Now let's go up to the top here and we can add a new tab. Let's now add a new item to our cart. Let's paste in this mutation and we'll add an item to the same cart. Let's run this. And you'll see here on the right that we get that response from the API. If we return this again, we can see here that this briefly loads and the API returns the updated total items. If your API supports any headers, we can also pass this along here, such as authorization. And these will be passed through to the request. We can see here that we have the tabs at the top. You'll notice that this tab is untitled, but if we give this mutation a name, add item, that will replace the name of that tab. Once we're done, we can close this and we'll return to our previous query. If at any point your GraphQL schema changes or you want to update the documentation, you can use this button here to refetch the GraphQL schema. We can also navigate through Graphical by using some shortcuts. If we click this icon here to open the short keys explorer, we can see a list of all of the short keys and their functions in this modal. Finally, let's explore the settings for Graphical. New to Graphical is the theme. We can set a light theme or we can set the dark theme or we can base it on our system preferences. If you want to remove anything from the graphical storage, you can do that by using the clear data button. So that's it, a brief introduction into Graphical 2 and how you can get started. This will feel very familiar if you've used Graphical before. However, now it looks a little bit nicer. It's using a few newer tools under the hood and this will be a lot more modular and easy to add plugins to in the future. You can also check out the code and the roadmap on GitHub, 
where you can get involved with submitting pull requests, reporting issues and more.